I don't think there's a field of medicine that doesn't require a textbook that encompasses the body of knowledge that is related to that field. I mean, we need it as we're physicians and we practice. We need it certainly when we're learning. We need it as things change and evolve. So I think as a reference for specific information and as a reference for therapeutic information, for, for both, it's good. And, and just learning. I mean, I think the book's well written. And I think this 10th edition is going to truly be comprehensive. It's going to represent what's in the title. I mean, comprehensive essentially means covering everything. And this edition will cover everything. This book have the best references that you could expect for every topic that the book covers. And we are covering at the present time everything that had to do with psychiatry and mental health. It is up to date. It does represent the findings and writings of the experts in the field, both young and experienced, and it's, it's a very good combination. The comprehensive textbook, we have many editions because we like to keep up with the changes. And I think it's also been successful because of its continuity. The idea that uh, a book is going to appear every four or five years, as this has, that represents updates in the field is very important for the practitioner or student who has to know what's happening, has to stay up to date in order to do his or her best for patients. And I think every psychiatrist should read a textbook that's up to date. The book has been as successful as it is because it really meets the need of uh, the practicing physician, the practicing psychiatrist, the medical student, the resident, and even uh, uh, mental health professionals from all fields, including art therapists, occupational therapists, and so on. You buy this edition if you're in training, uh, specifically if you're a psychiatric resident, because you want to learn as much about your field as you can and during your residency, even though you're working very hard and, and you feel like you may have no time, that's the time to garner this body of knowledge. That's the time to gather it to you. That's the time to learn it all. And where better to learn it than in the comprehensive textbook? So it's a book that's clinically oriented. We instruct these basic scientists to try to gear the book to the clinician. So what does genetics have to say to the clinician who's going to treat his patient, his patient, her patient? Uh, how does genetics impact the care of the patient? So basic sciences, which is an important part of the book, is very much geared to the practitioner. So I think that success has to do with the mission which is to ensure the best practice available for the patient. You want to know everything there is about the field that you're in. If you're working in psychotherapy, for example, you want to know everything there is to know about psychotherapy. And when you open up our textbook, you will find everything there is to know about psychotherapy. I think the book is helpful in so many ways as a reference. I mean, it's encyclopedic, really, in terms of the field of psychiatry. So, And we have a huge and very accurate index. So one can, if you're not uh, using it in e-form, look up the index and get to exactly what you want. On the other hand, you can use it if you're dealing with a patient and you go, you know, I, I'm not quite sure about something here, and you look up that particular area, whether it is schizophrenia or uh, some area of child development, and we have a lot of case presentations in the book in a form that's very readily accessed and very easy to see, so you go, how close is this to what I'm seeing, or is there any similarity, or how is that treated? I have the uh, comprehensive book handy, and uh, although I know the book because I have been reviewing it every single chapter, I keep coming back to the book and I keep looking even forward 
when I see some areas in the book that open the door, you know, for further activities and further uh, research and exploration, I just follow through on that. For instance, I had read, uh, I had headed, you know, programs in several occasions, and I bring in into the program people that I know that could go into research and could do the areas that I would like them to do. And they have been very positive, you know, for the field of large. And it's very important to uh, be able to advise your patients. Um, oftentimes bipolar patients will come in and say, look, bipolar runs in my family. Uh, is it safe for me to have a child? I mean, there are diseases that fall within the purview of psychiatry, such as Alzheimer's disease, various dementias uh, that are uh, increasing, uh, that uh, have to be brought to the public. Suicide has a uh, very high genetic correlation. And uh, if you know that, and if you know that you're prone to depression, you can start to uh, think about that early on in your own adult life or your child's life. Uh, to understand that there may be a risk. Uh, suicide has become an epidemic. Uh, there are over 40,000 suicides uh, in the United States, it's the tenth leading cause of death, and yet we don't pay enough. Uh, we pay more attention to uh, illnesses that have uh, less mortality attached to them. What we have to do, and what's terribly important, is to uh, raise the level of uh, awareness of mental illness to the same level, for example, that we have raised uh, the public's awareness of. Uh, cardiac illness, of uh, heart disease, uh, and things of that nature, that psychiatrists know the entire field, uh, even though they may practice in one narrow field. They'll be better able to serve their patients that way. So I think as the, uh, I think practitioners have to be experts in what their field is, and that expertise not only comes from practice, but that expertise comes from knowing the literature, knowing what other experts think. It's a book that must be read and uh, studied by every practitioner, and for that matter, every student in the field.